Our story continues from last season when Karen accidentally had put the ship so off course that Avenue 5 was now bound to reach Earth, not in a matter of months, but now at the end of eight long years. Captain Ryan is with Alina in the common living area, having a romantic date as the two watch Frank's cooking show on the ship's television. The communication system of the ship has been off for quite a while, and it appears that Ryan had not yet told anyone about the ship being off course. They talk about how their relationship would progress after they reach Earth. Alina promises that Charles was no longer an issue since he had gone off ship, and asks Ryan to come visit the children sometimes. Ryan as well happily agrees and even promises to give the children a tour of the decks when possible. Ryan's momentary happiness is soon disrupted when Matt arrives at the scene demanding to know why he hadn't told the passengers about their massive issue. Ryan tries to usher him away but Matt is adamant that he do something about the massive issue. Soon in a few days not only would the people start rioting, but the food and other resources would be over and then the issues would be even more deadly. Matt pulls Ryan aside and explains to him the several reasons why he must tell the people in the ship about the issue, but Ryan refuses to open his mouth. He is adamant that until Rav comes up with some solution about the food, he won't be telling anyone anything. Just then Rav arrives, she had come up with a solution for the entire deck and needed the board members to come and listen to, and hopefully greenlight it. Judd the owner of the ship, is in the dining area with Mads acting like he has no idea about the issue at all. He thinks perhaps pretending to not know would make him a victim, and he could shift all the blame to Ryan. When Billy arrives to call him for the board meeting, he pretends as if he doesn't even know where the board room is. Billy has to lie and tell HM that it's good news to make him rush to the room. In the board room, Rav explains that the situation they were in was dire. The eels in their secretion that was helping them with the food was not going to last everyone for the next four weeks let alone the next eight years. So she had come up with a plan to separate the passengers into three distinct groups. The guaranteed who would be less in number and be enough to get enough food to last the whole duration. The destiny people who would be locked in the lower half of the ship to fend for themselves and believe in destiny. And finally the pioneers who well would die. Everyone thinks it's a terrible idea especially Ryan who cannot allow such a horrendous thing to happen under his command. He doesn't really have any other idea, but he simply hates this one. He storms out of the meeting. Back on Earth, the Avenue 5 show is a massive hit coming to the close of its first season, and also another season is now soon arriving. Iris gets to the upbeat Donbeat show to talk about the situation in the actual Avenue 5 ship. She keeps telling the people about the dire situation of the ship, and tries to raise awareness, but the chat keeps asking her stupid questions, like asking her to do the cheese crackers challenge. When Iris is asked the question if the passengers have been told about the ship going off course, she decides to take divert the topic and take the challenge instead. Ryan then visits Billy in the ship's science department where Billy has been producing eels their only source of food. He explains to her that he will now go ahead and tell the people that the ship was off course and take responsibility for the whole issue. Billy is proud of his stand. Elsewhere, Matt and Rav decide that it would be best if Frank could deliver the news to the crowd through his show instead. It was apparent that almost all the passengers watched his show and it would be easy for them to reach everyone through a familiar face. They head to Frank's room and find him and Karen arguing. Apparently, Frank had restrained Karen and hadn't allowed Karen to leave the room in a long time, claiming that the people outside were pissed that she had made the ship go off course. Ryan is about to make the decision but just the Matt arrives and informs him that Karen was freaking out. He has to deal with that problem first. As Ryan and Matt race back to Frank's room they meet Alina and her kids and since Ryan is in the middle of something, he asks Spike to give the kids a tour of the ship. Back on Earth, Iris heads back to Mission Control and finds governmental agents have taken control of her office. They also know that she and Jet are the ones who had stopped the comms at the ship, and will be putting the ship's communications back on. Iris quickly rushes to the bathroom and calls Jed to inform him of the situation. Accidentally, however, this ends up revealing the secret to a bunch of passengers just at the same time that Spike arrives at the same place with the kids and Alina. Spike awkwardly takes them away, and to Billy's lab. There the children accidentally end up clicking some strange button, and now the ship was not only locked to head to Earth in eight years, but a path was also locked towards the nearest sun itself. Billy ushers the kids away and races to tell Ryan the issues. Ryan, on the other hand, is about to announce to the whole ship about the eight years off course issue, when he suddenly is stopped by Bill, and instead she accidentally reveals the ship is heading for the sun, ensuing a larger scale of panic all around the ship. The board members gather in the room as the passengers run around in a panicked frenzy. Billy explains that the ship was heading towards the sun, and would be moving nearby it, and could probably kill everyone else. 
The ship was insulated however so if they could move everyone to the rear end of the ship they could perhaps hope they would survive the crisis. The board is surprisingly calm, all except Judd who refuses to die in such a state. Everyone then gets together to gather the people to the safe end of the ship. Ryan races to Alina's room first, and is irritated and surprised to see that Charles still lives with Alina. He and Charles don't get along too much but there isn't much time to discuss their issues as he rushes the family towards the ship's safer end. Then he head room to room making sure every passenger was heading out of the room as well. Matt and Ryan even manage to find one guy who thinks he is too cool to be burned by the sun. Ryan threatens him with a fire extinguisher, and thankfully convinces him to head to the safe end of the ship as well. Billy is still busy trying to find a better area for them so that they all can survive when she remembers that the eels could never survive this temperature, and needed to be taken to the safe end of the ship, as well. The members at the lab then start transporting the eels one by one using buckets. The story also reaches back on Earth, and Iris is back on the upbeat downbeat show. This time she also finds another girl named Zara who claims to be the sister of Sarah, a person who died on the ship. At this point, Iris knows that this show could never get the awareness they needed so she instead uses the money she has to buy the Avenue 5 TV series. After transporting the eels, Billy had also found a tunnel that had a temperature of around 12 degrees less than the outside temperature, and that was their best hope. However, it could only fit 300 people, and the eels needed to be there as well so this would mean a big issue. They decide to let in women children and important staff inside the tunnel. However, as soon as Ryan announces this, the entire ship races to the tunnel entrance. Everyone wants to enter the tunnel and have a chance at surviving the sun's wrath, but it's not possible. Karen and Frank arrive at the scene as well, only for Frank to enter the tunnel but her to be left behind. Matt decides to stay back and Judd arrogantly heads in leaving Mads his best friend outside to die. Ryan wants to take Alina and the kids inside with him but accidentally pulls Charles inside the tunnel instead. Soon, the closest point to the sun arrives and the ones outside hope and are rallied by Matt to give it their best while inside Billy and Ryan monitor the heat. Soon Billy notices the temperature going down. They had survived. Ryan reluctantly opens the door hoping nay praying that the outside wasn't filled with dead bodies. Thankfully, the passengers outside had survived as well. Somehow they managed to water down the situation. Only Mads is pissed at Judd but the sly man manages to manipulate Mads into believing that he made Mads save his best friend, which was Judd. What a sly fox. Back on Earth, Iris heads to the set of the show, fires a random lady, and adds in Zara as part of the show. The new episode of the show airs and back on the ship. Judd is pissed that his role had been cut off massively. All that his character ever did was agree to things and he was determined to change all that. The issues in the ship however were much larger than Judd's petty ones. Billy realizes that the eels were not reproducing at the rate that they wanted them to, meaning that the food supply was running out. Not to mention that the tank containing the eels was malfunctioning and needed to be fixed. Billy was the only one capable of doing it but she too needed help. Suddenly they see a dot on the map. Their ship was heading to a military space station. They quickly make contact and first Matt, Ryan and Billy head to check the station out. They are greeted by really warm people who offer them food and company. The place seems to be really well organized and so, Ryan decides to call in all of his other friends of the board into the station, as well. Billy finds a guy named Lyle who is a physicist, and can help them with the tank. The guy is also someone with similar interests with Spike and the two end up forming a sort of bond. Frank and Karen also arrive at the station and Karen is still slaty about the fact that Frank had trapped her. She refuses to give him attention and keeps taunting him. When Frank finds a guy named Nathan, he invites him to be part of his cooking show and takes him back to Avenue 5. Judd who is desperate for some screen time follows them. Back at the station, Rav soon finds out that the place was actually a space prison for the most heinous of criminals. The warm lady who was in charge of the place was a dog abuser, and had sexually assaulted nine dogs. The other lady was murdered killed her mom and dad, and used their body parts to kill others. The physicist Lyle was actually a pedophile, and Nathan was interested in cooking but he was interested in cooking humans. The man was a cannibal. This whole station was a place to keep these psychopaths away from Earth. The crew somehow managed to run away from the station and back into the ship, but they still need the physicist to come and save their eel equipment. Everyone is not sure if they wanted to let a criminal into their ship, and this time Judd comes up with a really strange plan that they follow. They put Lyle into a ball and then that ball into a tube to get him directly to the lab. Once Lyle is done, he demands to allow him to stay back but they restrain him put him back into the ball and send him back into the ship. 
There was no way they would keep a criminal into their ship. After sending Lyle off, they quickly ride away only to find out that the cannibal Nathan was still in the ship. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn the notifications on so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.